Welcome back to my analysis of the magic squares of the seven planets of antiquity. I'm Aloisa, and today we are going to look at the third planet in line, namely Mars, which corresponds to Tuesday. Think of Mardi Gras. So Mars is ruling planet to the sign preceding Sagittarius and following Pisces, those signs ruled by Jupiter, namely Scorpio and Aries. It's noteworthy that Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, as this indicates a solidification of this practice at a time in history when the sun was in Aries on the vernal equinox. Since Jupiter was a 4x4 four four magic square, we proceed up one integer to a 5x5 five five for Mars. Since this is an odd number, we can create the diamond pattern as used in the creation for Saturn's magic square. As with Saturn, we begin by filling in the diagonals from top left to bottom right with the counting numbers. 1 to 5, then 6 through 10, 11 to 15, then 16 to 20, and finally 21 through 25. You'll notice this leaves us with unfilled entries inside our square. Let's take the central column with the extreme values 1 and 25. These are placed inside of the square at the farthest opening to their exterior position. Note how 1 is above 19, whereas 25 is beneath 7. We can do the same with the 5 and 21 in the middle row. Let's move 5 to the right of 17 and 21 to the left of 9. Now let's focus on the two rows above and below the central row. Each of their entries will be placed inside the box at the entry farthest from them. Note how 4 and 16 nearly change places, and 10 and 23 follow suit. The two remaining columns have their numbers inserted in a similar fashion. 6 goes down to the bottom and 24 to the top, whereas 2 goes down to the bottom and 20 to the top. What we have now is our completed magic square for Mars. As with all magic squares, we know that the sum of the row entries will be congruent. In our case, they sum to 65. What's more, this sum will be mimicked by the column entries. And most amazingly of all, the two diagonal entries sum to 65 too. In order to find the number associated with Mars, we know now to sum the row sums. Hence the number of Mars is 325. I'll come back to this with an actual example this time around, so let's proceed with our sigil analysis. To create the sigil that characterizes Mars, we first connect the counting numbers 1 through 25 with straight line segments. This is a nice pattern, but much like Jupiter's, merely informs the sigil for Mars. Note the placement of the crossbars as well as the semicircular arcs in relation to the enumeration pattern. Let's continue by filling in the corresponding Hebrew numerical equivalencies in our box. Aleph through Tiet, 1 through 9, then Yud through Yud Tiet, 10 through 19, then Kaf through Kaf Hay, 20 through 25. But what and how is this used in sigil creation? This time I promise to show you, but I'm going to use the sigil for the spirit of Mars to do so. This spirit is called Bartzabal. I've written this name in Hebrew to show how this works. Beginning with Lamed, in English reading direction, so backwards to how it's read in Hebrew, the gematric value for Lamed is 30. Not listed on our magic square, so we employ 3 in its place. Next, we look at Aleph, whose value is, of course, 1. Proceeding to Bet, or 2, we begin to see the creation of the sigil as pictured. Continuing on to Tzadik, which has a value of 90, hence we use 9 as its indicator. At this point, our sum is 123, but let's keep going. Resh has a value of 200, so we use 2 in its place bringing us to a sum of 323. And last but not least, the initial bet, with a value of 2, gives us a sum of 325, the very number associated with Mars. I'll be posting more planetary squares soon, but please subscribe to be notified when they are released. I'll see you next time.